he is a king at making the spot up wing three. No, not me. And not my co-host, Nick Cope, but Burke Gabe Buchenshell with UCLA Basketball. Joining us on the Bruin Insider Show for the aforementioned Nick Cope, I'm Brian Fenley. Burke, thanks so much for joining us. I uh, just need to thank you guys for having me here. We are going to have a blast with Burke, and you're going to learn, those who are watching or those who are listening, are going to learn a few new things about Burke, I guarantee it. From somebody like yourself, Burke, who has made a lot of sweeping changes from coming out here to the United States, learning the American game, how have you had to make it imperative to embrace being adaptable? So the adaption part is kind of hard because, like, I'm coming from Europe to, like, different country, and it's kind of everything different, even your coffees, eating, team, basketball, everything different, so... In the first two, three months, it's like really hard. But right now, I think I get ad- adjust like 78%, but I'm not like still 100%. But it's like, it's a been a great experience for me and everything. It just, I, I like it here, that's all. If you've never had Turkish coffee, Brian, it's a very <laughs> oh. good way to go. It's, 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 it's like an espresso, but more like harder. Intense. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it taste, really, you, you can taste the coffee like that directly. Yeah. It's, it's a really good way to go. <laughs> so you talking about adjusting, I wonder having a teammate like Lazar Stefanovic, who's from your part of the country, who's been here for a couple of years, how helpful is it to have someone like him on this team? Like it is the best, best thing di- directly because he knows like how hard it is uh, to live here and like to adjust in here. And he helping me a lot. I'm staying with the same home with him, and even in the school, he helps me. Like, I I need to thank him like all my all my seasons or all like year here. What are the benefits of being a roommate of Lazar Stefanovic? He's he's a he's like quiet. He helps me a lot. Like sometimes he knock my door. Let's go to practice <laughs> like that. He he he's just a great person. Like like great great. So I'm kind of lucky. This season for you, I know you got here late. You had to wait to get cleared by the NCAA. You've been banged up. You talked about just adjusting to living in a new place and then have to have basketball not be super consistent for you. How have you been able to handle those challenges? So the uh, first, like, I came late. Then this NCAA stopped, like, three games. I get, like, I didn't play. Then I start playing. Then I in- I have, like, two or three injuries. Now I able to uh, like play like hundred percent myself. It's kind of uh, like difficulties. Like it looks like difficulties, but it's kind like it's our our job is this. So like injuries and other stuff is in the basketball. So it's kind of like used to it. So it's it's not a like really uh, like big difference, but it's a, like. Heart. It just comes it. with playing. Yeah. These things happen. Yeah, these things yeah. happen. Yeah. And as you spend more time in Westwood, obviously, to your point, Barricade, you're getting used to the program, what it's like to be here, that acclimation process. And you mentioned Lazar, one of the, the leaders, one of the veterans on the team, somebody who probably at times has to be vocal as the guy on the court to kind of help everybody. When do you feel, Barricade, the need for when you speak up? when that might be at practice or say in a game and when, when your voice needs to be heard like actually like i'm, I'm a fresh pretty like it's my first season and uh some points of the game like when we are like in down da- like we be going down we need to like me lazar or the other guys need to speak up but like i'm a freshman and the other guys that are older than me doing their job like perfectly in that point but when they didn't when they didn't do it i start doing the stuff like they do like 80 percent i get like 20 percent so i understand your family just came out here and visited yeah right yeah how was that what they think of what you're doing here uh, and, and the place you're living in they, what was their reaction to everything they they just first day uh, i get them in the airport and everything they just want to uh, visit all the city, like visit all the like museums, uh, like special places, Hollywood sign for sure. <laughs> like we just rent a uh, we just rent a car, then go like everywhere. 
I was kind of, I don't like to visit a lot, like going, let's see here, let's see. I'm not like, kind of guy. I'm like a home guy. <laughs> so after practices, when they like going out, I was just going home. I just have like a dinner with them, uh, like eat with them or like going for a coffee. I'm not going with them to visit every place because I already visited. Yeah. So it's their turn to be a tourist. Yeah, I just I just saying them you need to go there, you need to go there, you just need to spend uh, this time there. Then it's kind of getting boring and everything. I just give them, then they go. <laughs> From being a tourist to us here touring around your your life story, Burke Buchanel joining us on the Bruin Insider Show. He wears number nine. He is a behemoth inside, but he's a positionless kind of player for this basketball team for UCLA. Nick Hope, I'm Brian Fenley. We're talking to, to Burke. You have spent a lot of time on TikTok. I know that that's a place where you'll watch basketball highlights, say, or YouTube of former UCLA basketball players, those who might inspire you. And I remember listening to an interview where you talked about the importance of Kevin Love, former UCLA basketball standout in your life, and what he meant to you. Having the chance to idolize a guy like that, how do you feel like his presence, even on a daily basis, impacts you? So I just want to like start with the how the Kevin Love story uh, happened. I just want to say that. So the, you know the 2016 finals. Yeah. Like I was I was like watching and like one in, in, incredible pass that Kevin Love made. Then like I just looked like his ca- career, like Minnesota, uh, Cavs, Minnesota, and like. Before that UCLA, then I said like, "Oh, this is the point. Like, this is this is the point you need to go to get the uh, NBA or like the better leagues because, like, we have too many. How many? Uh, how many players from NBA from here? Like too many to count. Too many, too many. to count. <laughs> Every year it seems like. So it's kind of my process to like UCLA and everything. It starts from like 2016 to look up for there. Wow. What uh, What is basketball like in Turkey, growing up playing the game? I know in Eastern Europe especially, it is growing, right? Mm-hmm. It, what was it like growing up playing basketball in Turkey specifically? So uh, I don't really know anything about this your high school or like mid, uh, like uh, prep school. Yeah, or... prep school and other stuff in here. But our basketball kind of like we don't have like a one-on-one. Uh, stuff basketball like always set offenses fast breaks like uh, looking for the uh, big man looking for the guards spot up shots like they force us to play like a senior teams like, mm-hmm. every time they like they don't want just like a one man show and other stuff they, they just don't want it they just want to do uh, play the we call it European basketball pass cut screen go with the set offense like uh, no random thing. We just need to like figure out what they're playing. So we, we uh, what the defense doing. So we need to play like that. So reading and like do, doing the stuff to defense. The intelligence that you were just describing that it takes to to be on the basketball court from your European influences, and you use that here in the United States, and clearly there are some differences in the types of games and game styles, and you've talked about that on, on prior interviews, but for you personally and your brand and garnering that respect, making the transition from Europe to the United States, what is that process like in in a sense, breaking barriers from people who say, well, can you translate that game to this game? And here you are, you're fighting and you're making it happen. So uh, not every team I saw like here playing like a Europeans in here. So their system is not uh, available for the Europeans. So uh, with the coach, like Rosh Cronin, like, and uh, the other players, like our chemistry kind of, uh, show up because like we do every stuff like they they play in like us we play like them in the same point like 50 50 maybe it's 60 40 a little bit american basketball is kind of but like we doing what we uh, what i did in the europe kind of like not every time but like 40 percent of the place maybe like 50 percent we just doing the European stuff and not not European stuff like uh, true basketball like for us. 
just like handoffs, screen set offenses, fast breaks, spot up trees, uh, extra passes. So it's not kind of like real, real hard, but in the offense, I'm saying, in the defense, it's kind of, it's uh, really different because the 3.9 is a little bit closer and the gaps are no gaps to penetrate like easily. Uh, like defensive style is kind of real different. So it's just the uh, hard part is like f for me, it's kind of defense. <laughs> interesting, interesting. What, with so many different backgrounds on this team, you know, what is it like seeing all of these different cultures that these guys bring come together on on one team? It's kind of di different because like we are all teenagers, like uh, nineteen to uh, eighteen to twenty two right now, so the the transition must be hard for me, for uh, my teammates, and like for the seniors in here too, like. Uh, other like Kenny that they are like staying in the four years or uh, like even Lazar because he's come from different team. The transition is really hard, I think. And we make it good, I think, because our, we, we, are not, we don't like, like a group and group like in the team. Like we just all uh, connected. So I think we passed it real good at that time. I love the, the philosophical outlook you have on basketball, the X's and O's. Clearly, you are a steward of the sport, and you love what it takes to be really special, and you're well on your way to doing that. Burke Buchenshell joining us on the Bruin Insider Show. He is number nine on the court, but he is inside our top nine as far as our favorite interviews. For Nick Hope, I'm Brian Fenley. Thanks so much for, for joining us here on the show. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys.